accolades listing him as the American talk, um, the American Tolkien. You've seen him listed as one of the greatest writers of all time. Um, we had a chance to speak back 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 in the uh, in the wonderful green room. <laughs> Those of you that are inside, don't, don't reveal that there isn't really a green room. Um, we had a chance to speak about a lot of issues and a lot of current uh, events as well. I want to tell you, I, was, I am so excited to have him here. Uh, our staff is so excited to have him here. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, George R.R. R. Martin. Thank you. Is this going out? Can everyone hear me? Good. It's uh, such a huge crowd. It's uh, I always worry about the people in the back and whether they can hear anything or not. Uh, thank you all for coming out. This is my uh, third visit here to uh, scenic uh, Carmel, and uh, it's uh, by far the biggest. Uh, so that's uh, that's very gratifying. Um, I'm going to say a few words here, and then we're going to throw it open for questions, uh, and I'll answer a few questions for uh, for a few minutes, and then uh, when that's done, we'll uh, we'll debate your books. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a we have a microphone out there uh, for the questioners. What's the procedure for people with questions? Should they come over to where you are, or are you going to circulate, or raise their hand, and the microphone will uh, come to you? Uh, let me let me start by talking about a few of the, the questions that uh, I always get asked, so uh, I can I can sort of jump ahead and avoid you having to ask those questions. Uh, Tyrion is my favorite character. Uh, Bran is the hardest character to write. I like the HBO show. Uh, the big question, of course, is. Uh, what took me so goddamn long? <laughs> uh, those of you who are standing there holding a copy of Dance with Dragons and feeling how heavy it is will have a clue as to what took me so long. It's, it's a monstrous book. Um, back in 2005, when I uh, initially split the book I was working on, uh, A Feast for Crows, into two books, I had, I had at a certain point there about 1,500 pages in manuscript uh, for Feast for Crows, which was just about the limit of what you can publish in a book before the book gets so big it starts falling apart and needs a forklift to move it. Um, and when I split it, essentially I pulled out 500 pages, the, the pages concerning the characters who did not appear in Feast. And that left me with about a thousand page book, and that was the Feast for Crows that uh, many of you have bought and read. So in that, of course, I published that infamous statement, which has haunted me ever since, that the, uh, the next book was half written and should be out in a year. <laughs> Famous last words, as they say. Uh, but that was, of course, based on a, a, an excess of optimism about how much I could produce and also on several uh, miscalculations. One of it is, okay, I have a thousand page book and I have 500 pages that are done that I've pulled out, so I need to write another 500 pages and I'll have a second thousand page book. And I estimated that that would take me a year. Uh, the two things I didn't count on is, well, uh, Dance with Dragons is not a thousand page book like Feast in manuscript. It's, it was a 1500 page book in manuscript. So uh, it required 500 more pages than I thought that I would have to write. I wasn't writing 500 additional pages. I was writing a thousand additional pages. And also, when I actually got into the writing, I discovered that uh, I didn't like some of those 500 pages I pulled out of Feast. Uh, so I spent a considerable time rearranging them, pulling them apart, moving things around, trashing entire sequences and doing new things. Um, so really, uh, I wrote more than a thousand pages. I wrote something like, I don't know, 1,200, 1,300 pages uh, with a little bit of material salvage from Feast. So it was a lot, it took a lot longer. And it's a complex book. but. Uh, those of you, I, I know that uh, many of you are buying it here today. Some of you have probably finished it while waiting in line. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and you know that it's a pretty complicated book. There are 16 point of view characters in it, uh, but the three that I think most of you have probably been waiting for, Jon Snow, Tyrion Lannister, Daenerys Targaryen, they take up uh, about half the book. Uh, so even though there are 16 point of view characters, those, those three characters uh, dominate. Uh, in addition to those three, we have uh, we have new characters, brand new characters that you've not met before, who are points of view, and we have new point of view characters, characters that you are familiar with, who have appeared in previous books, but uh, have never before had a point of view, so you'll be going inside their head for the first time. Um, it is not, of course, the last book. Uh, this is just the latest installment of A Song of Ice and Fire, and my plan is for two more books after this. Uh, the next one will be called The Winds of Winter, and that will be followed by A Dream of Spring. Um, it is my hope, I forget a word here, hope, 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 <laughs> <laughs> to finish that more quickly than I did the uh, last one. But I'm not making any promises or writing anything in blood or guaranteeing anything. Uh, I've learned my lesson from uh, what happened the last time around. So now, if anybody is tempted to ask me when the next one will be out, uh, my answer is it will be done when it's done. <laughs> and not a moment beforehand, because uh, it, does, it does take a long time. Um, so those are the frequently asked questions about dance. Now, the other question I get asked a lot, of course, is about the HBO series. Uh, yes, I love the HBO series. I'm very excited. I know many of you here today have probably just discovered the books because of the HBO series. It's, uh, it's been kind of fun for me to, uh, to find a whole new readership, many thousands and tens of thousands and indeed hundreds of thousands of new readers uh, who have enjoyed the show on HBO. I think uh, David Benioff and Dan Weiss, who are the showrunners, uh, have done an incredible job of bringing my story to the small screen. Um, I am involved in the HBO show, as some of you know. I'm a co-executive producer on the show. Um, my deal is that I write one script per season for the show. In the first season, I did episode eight, the pointy end, with my script. Uh, for the second season, I've already completed the first draft of Blackwater, episode nine, yes. which uh, you know is going to show the Battle of the Blackwater, and I, I hope we have the money to do that. That's <laughs> big challenge. I didn't didn't make it easy. The, the bastard who wrote the book really didn't make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> he has uh, hundreds of ships and, and uh, chains and trebuchets and wildfire and uh, horses and everything that makes it impossible to film uh, is in there. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping we won't just have someone standing on the wall looking and saying, oh, look at what's happening. <laughs> 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 but it may come down to it, because it's more expensive to, uh, to film these things than just to write about them. Um, I'm very gratified, th those of, many of you probably know this already, but uh, for those who've been not watching their television sets or hiding under a rock, yesterday morning the Emmy nominations were announced, and <laughs> Game of Thrones has been nominated, has gotten 13 nominations. Yeah including uh, many of the technical categories like, uh, you know, costuming and makeup, uh, special effects, uh, which is great, but we've also been nominated Best Director, Tim Van Patten, for his work on the pilot episode, Winter is Coming, Best Writing, Benny Austin Weiss for episode nine, Baylor, uh, and Best Supporting Actor, Peter Dinklage for his <laughs> And the most exciting of all, of course, uh, Best Dramatic Series, uh, where we'll be going up against the cream of uh, television, you know, Mad Men and The Good Wife and uh, many other uh, really, you know, kind of first-rate shows, HBO's own Boardwalk Empire as a real all-star list. So it's quite a coup to be nominated as uh, Best Drama. And, uh, you know, I hope we win, but uh, we'll see. When that's in September, you'll find out the results of the Emmys. Meanwhile, the show goes into production for its second season at the end of this month. I think yeah. July 25th, we resume uh, filming in Northern Ireland. And uh, the scripts are being written and rewritten and 
we're you know crunching our budgets and we're hiring actors. I think a couple of them have already been announced. Uh, Natalie Norma will be playing Marjorie Tyrell. You probably know her best from her role in The Tudors, where she previously portrayed uh, Anne Boleyn in the uh, Showtime show The Tudors. We've also got a, a, a young actress named Gwendolyn Christie who will be playing Brienne, the maid of Tart. And I haven't I haven't met her, but her audition was extraordinary, and she's six foot three inches tall, so she's going to tower over many of our people. She should be a superb uh, a superb maid of Tart for us. There are actually about a half dozen other roles that have been cast. But we're waiting for the deals to close, and so we can anna announce them yet. I, I hope I'll be able to announce some of them next week at the uh, San Diego Comic Con, but we shall see. So uh, don't ask me about those, because I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did, I would have to kill you. <laughs> um, British, British and uh, Irish actors, of course, chiefly, since our main shooting location is in Belfast. So if any of you out here in this crowd are indeed aspiring actors, please don't give me your resume and your 8x10 velocity. I can't, uh, you know, really do anything for you. Unless, of course, you're an extremely cute young girl and maybe, well... <laughs> no, forget that. Uh, so, um, you know, that covers some of the frequently asked questions. Uh, why don't we throw it open and... Uh, Get some questions, questions from you guys, and I'll uh, answer them for a while. Lori has the mic. How cold was it, and to what extent did you have to relinquish creative control um, for the series? And can you do anything to help the writers be a little less sexist because they could use few tips for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to completely relinquish creative control, really. Uh, you know, the reality is of Hollywood is is that everything is negotiation. And if you're J.K. Rowling, you can insist on veto power because you have a property that's so hot that every studio in Hollywood wants it. But if you're not J.K. Rowling, and I don't actually happen to be J.K. Rowling, uh, <laughs> or Stephen King, or one of those people, uh, you know, you, you, the studios won't give up control. Control is very important. Um, so the most you can have is influence. Now, a lot of writers uh, simply just sort of take the money and then distance themselves from the show. I wasn't willing to do that. So I have a certain amount of influence. I am a co-executive producer on the show. I write one script per season. And I, uh, you know, I have a voice in all of the casting. Uh, but it's only a voice. I mean, I, I can't veto a casting if I don't like it. Uh, sometimes I have a choice, and David has a choice, and Dan has a choice, and the director has a choice. We all argue it, and someone wins and someone loses. But, uh, you know, thankfully, these debates are usually between any one of half a dozen actors, all of whom would be good. And the question is to find which one is the best. Um, but you can't get any actual veto power. So. You know, I think they're doing a wonderful job so far, but, uh, you know, if something happened uh, and they stopped doing a wonderful job, I, I unfortunately would not be able to pre prevent it in any sense. I would just have to uh, kind of grit my teeth. But I'm not gritting my teeth. I'm, in fact, dancing happily. Uh, as for the sexism thing, I don't know about that. I mean, that's obviously something for further discussion. When you get up here, we'll have to have a, a, a brief talk about what you... Uh, what you object to and uh, what uh, what you don't uh, like. I mean, uh, well, sexism and sex is two different issues here, right? <laughs> I mean, I, you, you, you said sexism is what you're objecting to. Oh, I have no to. problem with sex. Yeah, no problem with sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, HBO is an adult channel, and they're always going to have uh, some adult content. It's one of the things that all the cable networks do not just HBO but Showtime and Stars and all these subscription things is they have to offer something that you can't get on CBS or ABC in order to get people to pay that monthly fee and subscribe. And uh, more adult content is, is one of the things that they that they offer. 